Well, blessed Sunday to you as we come with your weekly worship. It is in our calendar the sixth Sunday of Easter. If you were in Russia or in the eastern part of the world, you'd be celebrating Easter today. There are different dates by which people count their Easter's. So I just want to wish uh, all of us a happy Easter, regardless if it's the first day or the sixth day or the sixth Sunday of Easter. We celebrate the resurrection of our Lord each and every day. And that's what our passage will be calling us to. To not just abide in Jesus, but abide in his love. And he is our good shepherd, and we are the sheep of his pasture. And so today we remind ourselves what it means to abide in the love of Jesus Christ. But first, let us uh, remind ourselves that we need a Savior, that we are bound to sin and cannot free ourselves. Let us remind ourselves that Jesus Christ has conquered sin, death, and the devil. So let us continue with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may truly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, John says in his letter. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take time together to reflect about the ways that we need a Savior in our life. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Give us new life, Lord. Strengthen us so that we may walk in newness of life and, more importantly today, walk in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In his mercy, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. And so as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of your sins, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you join with me in prayer today? O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Acts, the 10th chapter. A little bit of background, Acts chapter 10 is a pivotal point in the book and in the mission of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was assumed to be the Jewish Savior, but he kept on stressing, like Isaiah 2, that he is the Savior of the world. And one of the new converts Many of them were Gentiles. Many of them had not submitted to Jewish law. Unlike the uh, eunuch we heard about last week from Ethiopia, who was a devout Jew, it seems, Cornelius, whom Peter was allowed to eat forbidden fruit and also was allowed to fellowship with, Peter had seen the Holy Spirit land upon him. And so, the question became, what is the criteria to become a Christian? First, it was love, and it, second is repentance. And that's it. 
And so we hear in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers, those were Jewish believers, who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues, extolling God. And then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. And our gospel today, our good news today, comes from John chapter 15, beginning with verse 9, which is where we ended it last week. Last week we heard that God prunes those whom he loves and makes us more fruitful if we abide in him. But notice the change this week. We are not just to abide in him, but abide in his love so that our joy may be complete. John chapter 15, beginning with verse 9, Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. My friends, this is the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Jesus promises joy today, and that our joy may be complete if we not only abide in him, for he abides in the Father, but that we abide in his love because he abides in the Father's love. The focus of this is the fruit of abiding. If we are looking at this as a tree, we would say that there are two aspects of a tree. The main trunk, where the branches branch out to, and the fruit that hangs at the end of the branches. When many of us look at a tree, we mainly look at the fruit of the tree. Is it desirable? When we eat the fruit, does it taste good in our mouths? It's only those who are doctors of trees, arborists and others that look at the main trunk and the branches to see if they are healthy. But for many of us, it is simply the fruit of the tree that brings us the delight and the joy of seeing whether the whole tree is healthy or not. The same could be said of the body of Christ. It is only those of us who are pastors and leaders that worry about 
the main trunk of the church, if not the branches. But the world, when we are seen in the world, looks at what our fruit is. And that becomes the standard of whether we are blessed by the Father or whether we are of the wrong type of trunk and branch. And that's why Jesus doubles down a little bit and says, if you abide in me, you don't just rest in the concept, the institution of me, you abide in my love, my work. That will be your work, church. That will be our work as disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus does this many times. He'll talk about one concept. John 5 speaks of Jesus being the bread of life. And then he focuses on that he is not just bread that gives life like regular food. He is the bread from heaven. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. He has life. But that life leads to love. And not just simple love but love that is from on high. Here's what it says that is so different from many of the other Gospels. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commandments. And 12, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's one of those things that sounds so great on paper, but in practice, it is difficult to produce that type of fruit. In fact, it is impossible unless we abide not only in Jesus, but abide in his love. That's why he connects it with saying it is not just resting, it is also following his commandments. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And then he says, no one has greater love than this, in verse 13, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Two things to look at in this part of the passage. Lay down one's life was the standard by which Jesus loved the world. We say that so easily, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son. And Jesus' way of expressing this love is to lay down his life for his friends. Now, the Greek word here, friends, comes from the word for love for brothers and sisters. And that is because we are more than just servants. We are siblings. We are children of the Heavenly Father. In the book of Hebrews, in that famed sermon, the writer of it specifically says that while Moses was a servant in the house of God, we become children in the house of God, inheritors of eternal life because we have been adopted, baptized as children, siblings with Jesus, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Therefore, when we talk about philos, brotherly love, which is the translation of friends, it's more than just liking someone on Facebook or befriending someone on other social medias, which is so easy to do and so easy to unclick and say, I'm going to unfriend you. Or we might even say in our institutions, how many people fall in and out of love. The scandal of our world in many ways is how many people not only get married rather quickly, but how many people get divorced rather quickly? And it isn't just a religious thing, it's a society thing. 
where it's easy to say a lot of things, which has been very popular today. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. Your thoughts and my prayers are with you. And of course, the scandal is, is because we like to say that so freely, but how many of us actually live it? Jesus gave that standard. If I am your friend and you are my friend, if you are my sibling in Christ as I am your brother and sister in Christ, therefore, you need to love one another as I have loved you. No greater love has anyone than this than to lay down one's life for one's friend. And you are my brothers and sisters. You are my friend, my Philoi. If you do what I command you to, that's where it is beyond just resting in Jesus, abiding in the vine. It is abiding in his love. If you do what I command you, I do not call you slaves or servants any longer. If we go to Hebrews, they would say, For a servant does not have a permanent place in the house, but a son or a daughter, a philoi, a friend does. Because a servant does not know what the master is doing. They just follow orders. But I have called you philoi, brothers and sisters, friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from the Father. And, my friends, giving you the ability to say a very intimate prayer with Jesus. Not just Father, but our Father, which is something we do every week, if not many of us every day. Not just the mere repetitive words, but Jesus invites us into that friendship, brother and sister, sibling relationship. And my friends, we dare not make it into something that we click on and say, that's nice. And then if we don't like it, if the burden is too hard, unclick ourselves from it. This is not the way of the Father. Now, maybe you're thinking, I can't love like Jesus loves. I can't be a brother or sister like I am to some, and maybe if you are brothers and sisters, sometimes those are some of the more difficult relationships because they go beyond just social convenience. What does that mean to love as Jesus loves? How do we rest in that? And so, in our gospel today, Jesus says and reminds us You did not choose me but I chose you. Now, many of us get stuck on the, maybe the predestination aspects of it because we want to be free and we want to freely make a choice for our things in life, including our religion. But Luther and others have stressed that while we may have choices in regular day life, when it comes to our faith, we have been chosen from eternity. For some of us who grew up in the church, we were even chosen before we had a say in it. This coming Sunday at East, last week at Central, we had students who had been baptized, not because they chose to be baptized, but their parents had chosen to bring them to the waters of baptism. And so they affirmed that, that the faith that they had been brought to was their faith. And they got to choose this day whom they would serve. That is very prominent in all parts of the Bible, even in the Old Testament. Joshua 1.9, choose this day whom you will serve. Deuteronomy is full of that. Those who are part of the covenant need to choose to be part of the covenant. But even before we choose, there is someone who has loved us and, yes, appointed us. You did not choose me, but I chose you. 
And so that should give us a confidence not to rest, but to go out and love. Love as I have loved you. You don't think you have that love? You don't by yourself. But in me, in the vine, you do. And you have the ability to love, eh? even as I have loved you. And I appointed you to go, and here's the word again, bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Not fruit for a season, but fruit that will last. Because it is not in the producing of fruit. Any tree, any vine has its seasons where it produces fruit and it doesn't. But if it lasts, it will produce again and again and again. If we choose to abide not just in Jesus, but abide in his love. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. And once again, he stresses back in verse 16, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And that's the key thing, in my name. Not just because you have the power to choose, but because I have given you the power to choose to love. So rest in my love and give th these commands to you so that you may not just ignore them, but do them. For Peter, that meant breaking the bonds of social relationships that he had once had. That separation of not only ritual, but food laws that, per that permitted him to go and fellowship, yes, have dinner with forbidden fruit and forbidden fruit of the table at Cornelius' table, where God gives the very stern injunction to Peter, do not call profane what I have called holy. I have made this relationship holy, and therefore abide in that love that I have given you for those who are in the Gentile world. Once again, we turn to that famous phrase that Jesus gave when he was speaking to Nicodemus. For God so loved the world, not just his people, for his people did not receive him, but the world that he gave us his only son, both as a gift and as a model of the godly life, to follow his commands and to bear much fruit. So my friends today, abide not just in God as a principle, for Lutherans, I would say, and others who have been in the practice of infant baptism, it isn't just, well, I've been baptized, so I already have everything taken care of. That is where we testify against the power of God in baptism. We just make it seem like an event that just happens and we can forget about it. No, it should be the thing that we rest in, that we dwell in, and that should motivate us that he first loved us so that we can love one another just as he has appointed us and empowered us and strengthened us to bear fruit. If we are truly friends of Jesus, if we are truly siblings of Jesus who have inherited this moniker, not by our ethnic background, but by not only our choice, but God's choice to be called children of God, we too can bear much fruit. And the God who gave joy to Jesus will make our joy complete. Would you join with me in prayer? Gracious God, thank you again for letting us not only abide in you, but abide in your love. And Lord, that means going out. 
That means following your commands. That means reflecting your love in this world. I pray for our two students at East who will be confirming their faith this week. And I remember those who confirmed their faith last week at Central that they would be models for us of what it means to not only be chosen by God, baptized when they did not have a choice, but more importantly, to willingly go into this world and live out their baptism, live out their calling as children of God. Lord, may we come to this altar to get strength and encouragement from your body and blood so that we may dwell in you as you abide in us. Bless us now and continue to bless us as we walk this pathway. During this resurrection season, let us be reminded that you dwell where two or three are gathered in your name, calling us not to rest but to work, and to work and rest together through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, walk with us in Jesus' name. As you taught us to pray so long ago, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join with me in Psalm 98 as we sing a new song to the Lord who has invited us to abide in his love. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O oh Lord, you have made us known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord. All you lands, lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp and the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it, the world and all those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness, and the peoples with equity. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. And if you are able to join us, we'd love to have you join us at Central today at eight th uh, at uh, ten thirty. There's a special service that uh, will be honoring Youth for Christ in our area, and a young gentleman who will be serving in Spain. So we have a very special day happening at Central. But at eight thirty earlier, if you want to come and join us, we have confirmation happening at East, and we have two young ladies who will be confirming their faith today, and we will offer Holy Communion so that all baptized Christians are welcome at our table. Come and join us. If you want to stay in the car, if you're in our vicinity, you can tune in. We have the markers on the door as you arrive. Take care. God bless. We have many ways for you to enjoy the services of God's house. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.